So please make sure that you have the same, the same worksheet that's in this video in front of you. Um, I gave it to you in class on Friday. So the computer printout um, often will look like this. There are different programs, and with each program, the printout looks a little bit different. So there are just key things that you have to look for in order to come up with the regression equation. Um, the regression equation is not given to you. Uh, it's here on this worksheet just to make things a little bit easier for you, but it's not normally given to you. All right, so some things to look for, and it's all written down on here. Please make sure you don't lose this worksheet because it will you'll need to refer back to it. So to, to come up with the equation, these are the two pieces of information that you need. The y-intercept is always next to the word constant, so you'll look for the word constant, and here is the y-intercept. Okay, so it's been marked on here for you, but here is the y-intercept, okay? All right, the slope is always next to where it says the, it's always next to the x variable, okay? So here, if constant is the y-intercept, then this word here is going to be what your independent variable, your explanatory variable, and the slope is right next to it here, okay? So you take that number, put it next to the slope, the protein is my x value, that goes here, and then the constant goes right here, and then you put your predicted value there. Okay, um, I, I don't always see this. Um, I know this one in the next example, the, it says dependent variable is total fat. Um, it's not always like that, so just be careful. You wanna be making sure you look here, okay? So this tells you dependent variable, what the dependent variable is, r squared. So to calculate r, you would take the square root of this. It doesn't usually give you r. Um, S is the standard deviation of the residuals. Um, I talked about that in another video and I said it comes up very occasionally, so it is given to you here. But it's not the standard deviation for the data, it's the standard deviation for the residuals. So make sure you pay attention to that. All of the things in here we will deal with later. Um, I, it's much later, okay, um, like unit 6 or 7, and we're on unit 2 right now. Okay, but on this worksheet, on the front of this worksheet, it does also talk about what the standard error uh, for the coefficient means. So right down here, uh, it's you're given the standard error, which I know we haven't talked about, and we're not going to be talking about it more than this. Um, the standard error is given to you for the constant, um, for the for those two variables, for the um, the slope and the y-intercept. It's going to be given to you for. Okay, they each have their own standard error, and it talks about it's the variability in the sampling distribution. Okay, don't need to know that for that right now. Okay, and you can read through this and get more information. Let's turn it, turn the page over, and look at this. So, what is the correlation between an alligator's length and weight? Look right here. R squared is um, 83.6%. So r is going to be equal to the square root of 0.836. So r is equal to 0.914. Okay. The regression equation, okay, well we look here, dependent variable is weight. So weight hat is equal to, here's my y-intercept plus my length is 5.9 times length, okay? Um, another thing that you need to pay attention to, I should have mentioned this before, so since you're given r squared, we don't know if the correlation is positive or negative, okay? Because it can be either. It, it, it can't be either with the problem, but when you take the square root of, the, of r squared, we don't know if this is positive or negative. So you're going to look at the length, or the, you're going to look at the, um, the slope to determine if this is positive or negative. If this is positive or negative, then this is going to be the same. So in our case, 5.9 is positive, so the r value is going to be positive. Okay. Uh, interpret the slope in context of the, or in, yeah, of the equation in context. Okay, so the slope is 5.9 for every one inch in length, oops, 
for every one inch in length the predicted weight of the alligator increases increases by approximately 5.9 pounds. Okay. All right, do you think this equation will allow the scientists to make accurate predictions about alligators? In other words, how strong is the model at predicting? Okay, well, we go back up here and we see r squared is 83.6. So the variance is pretty high. Um, that means that 83% um, that of the um, alligator's weight, the predicted weight, can be explained by the length. 83.6% is pretty high. So we would say r squared is relatively high. So it appears appropriate to trust the linear model. So 83.6% of the alligator's weight can be predicted by the regression line of weight on length. Actually, it should be of length on weight. Okay. All right. How do you know a linear, linear model like this is appropriate? Okay. Well, actually, what we would have to do is look at the residual plot. Okay. So we don't know if it's really appropriate that because those numbers, the R-square, can be high, but we don't know what the residual plot looks like. Okay. So your answer here, we would need to look at the residual plot. to determine if the least squares regression line is appropriate with this data. Okay. All right. That's it.